Alright, alright, what's good everyone? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Bear with me if there's a little bit of background noise today. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad, hopefully you can hear me just fine. So, had a couple days to ponder on this, to sit on it, and I really wanted to uh, do a specific segment here on the channel about um, Rohit Raju. And, uh, you know, recently he announced on Twitter that he is a free agent going forward. And um, this is a, this is someone who I've become a really big fan of, someone who um, I've got to know a little bit. I think is a great guy. And um, this one really hurt me. And I haven't, you know, there's been a lot of impact releases over the years where, you know, some of them upset me, and then some don't affect me at all. But but it's rare that I have like a real emotional reaction to it where I'm just like genuinely hurt genuinely genuinely pissed off about it um, so this was one of them and I was actually getting ready on one of the upcoming uh, cool factor podcast to talk about this and not talk about this but to talk about Rohit because I honest to God it's just kind of randomly hit me the other day I'm watching an episode and I'm like I think this dude is the best all-around performer in this company if you're talking about in the ring and on the mic and, and the character work and uh, his look, how he's improved. And when I buy look, I mean his ring gear, outfits, things of that nature. And then on the flip side of that, the work he's done to his physique. If you look at him from day one compared to him now, they're two different people. They're two completely different people. And he's one of the last few people from like the days of TNA you know what I mean there there's just a few Alicia Moose Eddie Edwards Rosemary might be another out there but you know uh, Falaba well he came in a global force thing and I think they let's not get into global force wrestling right now but anyway he's one of the last few people who've been here for a while and I've had a little bit of dialogue with him, so I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, and I didn't ask directly, but it almost it almost seems like this wasn't his doing. You know, this wasn't like, hey, I'm not re-signing, I'm not staying. Um, and I think I think they announced a multi-year deal for him not that long ago. So this this was this looks like a release to me, and it, it makes me question: Does the company value? creating their own talent you know uh, one of AEW's marketing campaigns is that they have their four pillars right like the four people like this is like the foundation of this company this is what holds this shit together uh, these are big players going forward and I get it with a company like impact which is smaller and it's not the the end game for most wrestlers it can be difficult to do that but you know Maybe not everyone graduates to go make millions on the WWE level, but there's something in building your own star and being the next Eddie Edwards. You know, someone who has his, his spot, lives comfortably, everything is good. You know what I mean? There, there's value in that in the wrestling world with, with a company like Impact. You can work up to that. You can aspire to do that, to be that, and a lot of people would probably be happy with it. So it just it just makes me question uh, the commitment to building to building talent in house. This was one of their few homegrown stars, along with uh, uh, Kiara Hogan. You know, Th those were two that they essentially built from scratch. And you have to think when you, when when a company like Impact says we we don't need your services anymore, like they really didn't have anything for this guy. He, he took everything he was given and made it work. They had him from his first day in the company show up, look like a fool, was going to cut a promo, and just got, before he could say two words, uh, was attacked or pushed out of the way. Like, hey, you're, you're a piece of garbage. You're a jobber. Th that's how they came off. And then I think he lost his first match too. 
And then they put him in the Desi Hit Squad. A group that had potential and people were actually kind of excited to see what what it was going to be and it never it just was never it didn't have direction you know we had four members announced only two were ever on TV I shouldn't say that Bupinder Singh was on one episode <laughs> as like an honorary member honorary member and there was a uh, another guy I want to call him Furkan Korkmaz, but that's a player on the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, there, was a, there was another dude. We never saw him. And then, uh, you know, Raj came in. Uh, Raj clearly is gone next because he, uh, unless he's with Rohit, he's not doing anything on that show. You know, and they just brought him back. And then when they brought him back, it, it, it went nowhere. Like, he came, he showed up one week, did a sneak attack, you know, sneak, re- uh, you know, surprise return. They weren't even on TV the next week. And then, uh, you know, they wrote Shira off TV because he took a radio silence from Matt Cardona. Like, I could take a radio silence from Matt Cardona and show up to work tomorrow. It's just bananas. But with the exception of that X Division title run, they had the little segment before, I shouldn't say, segment, a program where he kept losing. And I remember those losses were, like, pissing me off, (laughs) like, big time as a fan, you know, but he had, he had that period in time where he kept losing and then he became the X division champion. And it's like, okay, he's there. You know, this is the next step for him. He's a champion. And then he eventually loses it, but then you, you build on it from there, you know, and that, that just didn't happen. And this is someone who really established himself to go back to what I was said at the beginning as the total package to where I really think he was the best all around talent on the roster. You know, he, he probably had, can talk better than anyone on that on the Impact roster. There's people at the top of the card, Eddie Edwards, uh, love Eddie Edwards, don't get me wrong, who, who can't talk. You know what I mean? And, and this guy's here, uh, no matter what he was given, showed the ability to speak, to cut a promo, to be engaged, and to get a reaction. And he was able to have any kind of match, you know? If, if, it, if there was storytelling involved... He could do that. If there was comedy involved, not my favorite thing in the world, uh, in wrestling in general, but he could do that. If it was just a flat-out X Division style match, multi-man match, like he was able to do all those things. And uh, I actually think he's the closest representative on the that was on the roster to the AEW style of wrestling, like this that you know the real like fast pace, back and forth moves, and they're just crisp. Not to say everything AEW is crisp, but they have a very fast pace and uh, that kind of hit me the other day when we were watching um, I think it was Laredo Kid and Chris Bay and I and I had said man I, I thought this match was gonna be a lot more fast paced than it was you know they, they kind of told a story throughout it that I didn't think was necessary because they didn't have any real heat other than bumping into each other in the hallway um, but that's when it kind of hit me I was like man bro he always has really fast paced matches you know like he, he's just very crisp very good in the ring he does really good work uh, locally here at Glory Pro, um, AAW, which is uh, a few hours north of me in Chicago. You know, he's had great matches with Jake something on the independent scene. You have to believe Jake is, you know, Jake is next. And that's that's going to piss people off, too. I, I haven't come across one Impact fan that wasn't upset about Rohi. Any group chat I'm in, any um, text I've had with anybody, any any dialogue with anybody. People are just like, what the hell? And most people are saying, well, freaking Jake's next. Because th- this guy's just wrestling on BTI. Had that big X Division match, title match. Nothing. You know, I, I, I joke that he should change his name from Jake something to Jake sometimes. Because that's how often they use him. He, he was just never like... You, 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 you're you talking about the pillars. Like, these are two dudes... <laughs> that could be those pillars along with like maybe Trey Miguel, Chris Bay, something like that. You know, I thought Jake was poised for superstardom within the Impact world after he had that tables match with Diener and then wrestled for the TNA title against Moose in the same night. Like you you would think that was like the launching pad to the next level and it wasn't even close. You know, so, you know, these were, he. you know, this isn't a Jake something thing. You know, we're talking about Rohit. Everything that he was asked to do, he did. He delivered. 
the fans always wanted more for him. You know, there's no reason he couldn't step into that main event scene. Like the main event scene right now, you know, obviously Cardona and uh, what's his fuck, uh, Morrissey are in it, in the, you know, the title picture. But I mean, you're still talking. It's Moose, it's Eddie Edwards, it's, you know, Sammy Callahan when healthy. You know, it's the same general like four people that that have been the main event picture or considered the main event guys like we haven't seen you know uh you know rich i mean you can put rich swan in that category a little bit too but you know we we don't see them okay let's see if we can get this guy into the main event picture and see what he does with it you know and uh he's just someone that i felt like you could have you could have got him to that level because he has progressed so much within the company you know take i'm going to use eddie edwards for an example again and i'm sorry but take eddie edwards over the last three years all right what has he changed from day one to today with the exception of his haircut the ring gear is the same everything's the same think about rohit raju three years ago up until today and how much growth we have seen in that amount of time and you're just going to tell me we, we couldn't t- get this guy to the next level and outside looking in as a fan i'm going to wrap this up you know what are they doing making releases so they can bring in mike bennett or or something like that i mean does that make a difference does that move the needle you, this hurts when it comes to establishing a brand. You can't establish a brand if the, the parts are interchanging. Like, think about Ring of Honor, rest in peace. I can't think of a single time someone's like, I, they just left Ring of Honor. I, I'm sorry, there's one or two instances. I mean, but people didn't really like leave Ring of Honor. Like, Ring of Honor kept their people unless they moved on to NXT or something like that. Like, that was part of the brand was the roster. And this roster is just, it's just a carousel like it's just people cycling in and out and that works if you want to do that but you have to have your base of guys too and it doesn't even feel like that's even the case you know but i mean are they releasing for for guys from you know ring of honor who maybe maybe not i guarantee you whoever they sign or replace him doesn't have the character work that he he has or the, the character ability i don't even know if that makes sense what i just said but the ability to be a character you know, maybe the in-ring is the same, but, you know, say it's Mike Bennett, who I like. Uh, he's not going to be the miracle. So the Mike Bennett we see now, I mean, compare the in-ring, the mic work. You're going to tell me he's he's better in those areas? He, he's not. I mean, let, let's be real here. He's not. So now it just becomes, okay, we're trying to bring guys in that we're in WWE and things of that nature. But, you know, you're, you're, bringing up, you're bringing in a dude, if the rumors are correct, that left you once before. And now you're like, oh, you, you know, we'll come in and re- replace this guy that's been loyal to us. <laughs> you know, so um, I've been talking for a while here only because I, I have <laughs> genuine passion about this subject. And I'm, I'm sure I have some other points that... I forgot to make and on the next cool factor podcast uh we'll we'll probably get into it some more i'll let tw you know speak his piece because i know he's going to have some thoughts on it as well uh, but i want to read your thoughts of course about uh you know not just rohit but just the the general idea of people being released because when you guys when you guys get on twitter like oh sign this person and you know sign bray wine and bronze Strowman, like this is the result of that you know, that's, that's, it's the result of, you know, the people out there saying, hey, bring these people in or try to bring these people in. Well, they got to make cuts somewhere. This is an AEW who brought in 28 new wrestlers last year and only got rid of one and then one left on her own. You know, like, that's what I got for you guys today. Um, I'm your boy BQ. If it's your first time here, consider becoming a subscriber. Hit that thumbs up. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm out. Peace.